This is the Gold Coast, uh, almost uh, just a touch over 24 hours out from the A-League decider between Brisbane Raw and Perth Glory. Glad to say I'm joined by Mike Mulvey, uh, former coach of the Gold Coast. Uh, that uh, former, of course, is the contentious part uh, with uh, what happened with the club up here. First, we need to to touch on that. Uh, you'd been with the club, uh, with a successful uh, youth team, bringing those players through into the senior team. And you were just saying before, it's now such a, a wasted, uh, really, uh, opportunity to see all the work that's gone into developing those young players at the club uh, with, with what happened with the club. How, uh, how heartbreaking was it? Well, first of all, I don't think it's wasted uh, totally because these players are still going to be uh, playing in the A-League because a lot of them have done themselves uh, proud over the last six weeks of the season and have managed to pick up contracts. So that's a very good thing. But could you imagine if, uh, if you'd managed to keep that team together and developed and nurtured them for Gold Coast United, um, you would have had this team that had been uh, developed through the youth, brought through to the senior team, and actually playing for Gold Coast United, representing them in the A-League. And I think they would have been very competitive in years to come. So yes, it is a shame. Um, I'm very proud of what we actually achieved with the players, uh, and I wish them all the very best for the future. It's a shame that we're not going to be able to stay together, but uh, football's a ruthless game, and, uh, and we move on. Is professional football lost uh, to the people of the Gold Coast now? I think for the moment uh, it's definitely in the background. There's, there's, um, there's no doubt that um, the A-League won't return here uh, or for a number of years, I would imagine. I mean, but you only have to look behind us today. You know, you've got uh, an over 35s and an over 40s competition, and you've got people from all over the world who are represented here. Um, there's a very strong um, junior base, and I think that that's the biggest shame of all. You know, you've got young kids coming through who now might have to move into state to find a club. Uh, we've only got one team in Queensland, which is a, a great, a great shame as well. Um, but um, football uh, people are resilient people, and I'm sure we'll find a way. I think it's very important now that the development process is continued on the Gold Coast, but we need to find a way for the, uh, for, for the pathway to continue somehow, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure FFA will be working on that. We're talking to Craig Moore before, uh, just in his Aviva uh, program, there's almost 4,000 kids. I mean, that was more than the, the Gold Coast was pulling for, for most matches. It's truly astonishing. I mean, what, uh, what went wrong? How did it get to that stage where you've got such a, an active uh, football community here who weren't, weren't being brought into the club? It's funny, uh, I've just been doing my uh, professional diploma and one of, the, one of the questions is about the functions of your club um, and how it works. And I think one of the things I've touched on, and it's, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, we just didn't, uh, we didn't connect with the community, uh, not well enough anyway. You know, we did our little bits, uh, but I think there needed to be a, a stronger drive. And I think that might be the way forward for, for clubs. And you know, what we need to do is take the lessons of the Gold Coast and apply them to future franchises or, or current clubs that are actually running at the moment. You must connect with your community. Um, and I think that uh, the model of um, several owners uh, or, or community-based owned program and a, a club-centered um, model, which you know uh, brings maybe a technical director along with a coach, uh, is probably the way to go, I think, in the, in the future. What, uh, I don't know how much you can say or not, but I mean, there's been a lot uh, said and written about Clive Palmer, uh, some of the, the rather uh, maverick uh, moves that he's made uh, in recent times. You work closely with him uh, in the club. Uh, how, uh, firstly, did it, did it come to this? And, uh, and are you surprised that he's, uh, that he's kind of kept the fight going? Uh, look, well, first and foremost, Clive Palmer um, is responsible for Gold Coast existing in the first place. So he needs to, he deserves a lot of credit for that. I mean, his deep pockets allowed the, uh, the club to, um, you know, to start and then also develop. I mean, we, he was very proud of the youth team. Um, and that's, that's the most uh, uh, upsetting thing as far as I'm concerned, is that could have been built into something very, very strong in the future. Um, as, as to what's happening now, I think poss possibly, um, you know, he may have been guided in the wrong direction by fo people within football. Um, that's a great shame. But uh, he's his own man. I, I have no idea uh, what... Um, what might happen in the future with him um, but what I do know is that um, football is, uh, is the best game in the world and uh, it will survive um, without him without any questions of doubt. Out of the ashes of the Gold Coast though uh, an opportunity uh, arose for yourself uh, to, to show what you could do of course one for the boys as well a lot of young players we saw over the last month or so the competition uh, you've been waiting a long time in this game and you know opportunities don't come along uh, very often uh, you you took it well uh, the, the results and the style of the team were was highly regarded in the in the football community. You've put yourself uh, squarely in the shop window, and I imagine now, uh, hopefully, an A-League uh, gig is uh, is the plan for you uh, in the near future. Well, what I'd like to say about the uh, the last six games of the season is that the the players responded magnificently. Um, 
and they put themselves in the shop window, which I was really pleased about. And a number of them have gone on to claim a contract in the A-League, which I think is, uh, is great. And as I said before, they're not lost to the A-League. They're actually going to be uh, you know, moved around. It's just going to be from se several clubs. Um, all along, it was about players' uh, preparation and performance. Uh, we didn't get distracted in any way, shape or form. About myself personally, uh, there are a number of uh, job opportunities available right now. Um, but I want to get to a place um, that's uh, to willing to invest in the long term. Um, I think that football will survive in Australia without any question of doubt. It is the world game and I want to be a part of it going forward. So, uh, yes, I'm very keen to get back involved in the A-League, um, but I won't be rushing to take just any job. I want to take a job that um, is going to offer um, myself the best opportunity to, uh, to work in a professional environment and develop uh, players um, for the long-term sustainability of that club. Um, but also the short-term success. You can do both together. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking for an opportunity, um, um, but I'm very pleased to say that um, the last six games of the season showed, us, showed all the players and myself, I guess, in, in a good light. That opportunity uh, is working with kids, working with the youth teams, or, or do, do you want to have a, a head coach role should that opportunity arise, and, and do you feel you're ready for that, uh, that next step? Um, well, that's for other people to judge whether I'm ready. Uh, I believe in myself uh, very strongly. I think I have the, abil the ability. Um, I think I've um, got the experience now, which I've, uh, you know, I've been working in youth development for quite a number of years. I've worked with senior players for a long time as well. Um, and I, and I've, yeah, I'm certainly ready, in my opinion. Um, it's a question now of uh, whether the right gig comes along. Um, yeah, but um, you know, there's, there's a number of, uh, a number of uh, moves happening at the moment, if you would believe what's read in, what you read in the papers. The merry-go-round is, uh, is moving quite quickly. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get on the merry-go-round. How have you seen the, the standard, uh, not just on the field, but the standard of coaching? You talk about now that you're doing your pro licence. We know now that uh, there's minimum requirements for all coaches in the A-League and uh, I think it's generally accepted that the coaching standard has risen uh, in step with the playing standard. How uh, do you see things sitting here now, uh, seven, eight years down the track uh, from the inception of the A-League? Well, again, if you, uh, if, you, if you look at the success that the Australian coaches have had, um, you know, and those of us who have been uh, in Australia since... Um, since uh, our teens, you, you see that um, they can actually do the job. I mean, the, the success that Ange has had and, and Graham at, uh, at Raw and Mariners uh, has been sensational. And, you know, we've imported coaches and some have been uh, successes and some haven't been as much success. Uh, and I think it's time to give the, some of the local guys a go. It's a shame when you see uh, uh, people go overseas to, uh, to, to work in the game, so to have to... Um, move forward, but the reality of football is in Australia there's only nine jobs. Uh, there's a tenth one in the A-League if you count New Zealand. Um, but I think, the, I think the coaching ranks are strong and I think the future is strong. Um, it's incumbent upon the administrators of the clubs actually to make the right choices and to put the right model in place. That's the key. What's your coaching philosophy? Where do you, where do you get your cues from? I mean, how, uh, how would you like your teams to play football? Um, Look, I, uh, I believe very much in wingers. Um, I, I started looking for players uh, quite a number of years ago when I was involved in youth development to try and bring through uh, exciting young uh, wide players who could you know, entertain me as a coach, uh, but also get back to you know, playing with a lot of width. Um, Tommy Orr was one of the first guys who came through to the QS. He was about three foot six at the time. And, uh, got much bigger since then. No, but he's uh, he's a lot better. He's a lot better. Uh, and, you know, you've got Benny Halloran at the moment, uh, who came through uh, with us at the Gold Coast. Um, but I my, my philosophy is about uh, a possession-based game, um, very much uh, attack-minded. Um, I like to build up through the lines. Um, I think it's important that you play with the ball. You know, uh, I, I like to call it football, not fight ball. Yeah. Uh, so I like to see all my players comfortable in possession of the ball. And I think it's important that um, you know at the grassroots that we make sure that we're developing those players uh, who, who are comfortable with the ball. You know, there's a lot of talk going on about it, um, but we need to see more action with regards to that. You touched on a couple of the young guys at the Gold Coast. Who else uh, in the A-League of the, the younger crop of kids? There's been a lot written about, uh, I mean, uh, Musti, Aminia, Bernie, uh, Tommy, the, the young boys at the Mariners. Who, who excites you? Uh, who can you see pushing on and, uh, and uh, having a, you know, a fully-fledged uh, soccer career? Uh, well, one of the guys who just left our club, um, he's probably jumped from the frying pan to the fire, uh, James Brown. Come from Gold Coast to Newcastle, so uh, it's a kiss of death. yeah, yeah. Um, look, if I was uh, if I have a coach of a of club right now, I'd make a real play for James because I think he's got a very bright future. You see some of the things that he does at training. You see some of the things that he does in a game. 
Um, if he can get his body right and he's able to put in a full shift for the whole year, very exciting player and very, very good for the future of, uh, of the game. Um, you know, I, I've been impressed with um, the, the Central Coast Mariners boys, um, Abini up front, you know, he's got pace. Now, if you don't have pace up front nowadays, um, you, you know, you can't, um, you, you, you can't really attack teams um, and play a counter-attacking style if you want to, or you, you know, you can't upset the opposition defenders. And I think he's, um, he's caused a lot of problems for teams uh, throughout the year. So, you know, Melbourne Hart, you know, I mean, Melbourne Hart, um, Babal's up front. I mean, what a good young player. But the key thing, the key thing is giving them the opportunities in the A-League. And what I'm proud about is that we gave seven at, the t at one time, which is unprecedented. And we proved that you can compete. You know, we weren't going to be uh, winning games three and four nil or anything like that, but we can compete. Now, with that experience comes development, comes improvement, and then down the track, they become serious players within the A-League. And um, then you're talking about real excitement for the future. Were you pleased with how Mitch uh, Cooper responded? I mean, because the, the whole drama about what happened in that week uh, almost uh, had the, the opportunity to kill his career. I mean, there was so much focus and expectation and pressure on the kid. I mean, what, first of all, what was your reading on that situation? I mean, it was a dramatic uh, elevation and uh, you must have been pleased with the way he responded over the subsequent matches. Well, initially it was out of my control what actually happened. I, I, got, um, I got told I was in charge of the team on the plane on the way down on the morning of the game. Um, the first thing was to uh, make sure that the playing group were aware of the circumstances, which uh, they, they took it really, really well in the end. Once we explained what was going on, they understood it was out of our hands. Um, but um, Mitch is a very uh, young boy for 17, um, but he is a magical talent. He's, he does some special things in the games and training. Uh, he's got a future. Now, the, ma the main thing for me was to make sure that he wasn't um, caught up in all the hype. I just told him to go out and play uh, with a smile on his face uh, and to understand that he be he belonged there. He deserved his opportunity. It wasn't about the captaincy. He had uh, 10 captains with him walking out onto the field. So that wasn't a problem. And I was the thing that I was especially pleased about was that he didn't have uh, a great game. He had an OK game. Because if he had a great game, it would have been extra press, extra uh, pressure on him. So he responded magnificently. And, you know, as you saw towards the end of the season, he got tired. We had to bring him off a few times. We had to rest him. But he's definitely one for the future. Mike Mulvey, uh, before we let you go, tomorrow, Brisbane Raw, Perth Glory, everybody's a tipping uh, Brisbane. You're not going to buck the trend and go for the glory, are you? No, I'd like to tell you it's going to be a 4-3 thriller, but um, I think that Brisbane might have too much mobility. I think that uh, Perth Glory will come and they'll uh, have a go for the first 20 minutes and try and uh, maybe pinch a goal. Because if you score first against the Raw, um, you know, you, you, can, you can cause them some problems. Um, the, the one thing I'm concerned about with the Raw is that they play a very high line at times and you can get in behind them, but I don't see that um, Perth have enough pace to actually uh, cause them problems. Um, I'm tipping that, um, that uh, Smeltzy will be kept scoreless and I think that Brisbane might manage to win 2-0. So you've heard it first. I go and get on at the, uh, at the various betting agencies around the country. Mike Mulvey, we wish you uh, the best of luck in the future. Good luck uh, with any A-League posts that may come up and uh, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. My pleasure. Cheers, Scott. Cheers, man.